Hello all, welcome to my channel Brainy Beardo. In this session, we will be learning about rotational flow and the concept of rotation, vorticity, angular deformation for a fluid that undergoes rotational flow. First, let us understand the two types of flow based on rotation. The first one being called as the rotational flow. Now, the rotational flow is defined as the flow in which the fluid particles rotate about its own axis during the flow. To understand this, let us take a fluid flowing inside a control volume. Now, we would take three fluid particles and when these fluid particles flow through the control volume, if the fluid particles rotate about its own axis like this, then such kind of a flow is called as rotational flow. Now, let us understand the second kind of flow based on the rotation. It is called irrotational flow. Now, in this is a case where the flow in which the fluid particles does not rotate about its own axis during the flow. Which means, again, if you take the same fluid uh, where it is flowing inside a control volume. Now, if I take the same three fluid particles, if it flows in such a way that it does not rotate about its own axis during the flow. So, which means it flows something like this then such kind of a flow is called as irrotational flow. In the first case, the fluid is rotating about its own axis while the flow is happening. In the second case, the fluid is not rotating about its own axis while the flow is happening. So this is a case of rotational flow and irrotational flow. Once we have understood the concept of rotational flow and irrotational flow, it is important for us to learn a new concept which is called as rotation. Now, to understand rotation, let us take a small example. Now, let us take an object and let us assume that it has been pulled by two people at the two ends of the object towards the right side. We shall name the forces Fa and Fb. Now, let us assume that all the horizontal actions as x-axis and all the vertical actions as y-axis, which means Fa and Fb are acting along the x-axis and these two forces are spaced along the y-axis. Now, if we assume that Fa is equal to Fb, that is, the two people are pulling it with the same force. It means that the gradient of force along the y-axis is zero. When we say gradient, it is the difference of force along the y-direction, which is mathematically written as dou F by dou y is equal to zero. So, in this case, the table moves forward without any rotation. Now, what if we assume that Fb is greater than Fa? That means that the gradient of F along the y direction is not equal to 0. That is, dou F by dou y is not equal to 0. We have seen with our experience that if two people are pulling a table from two ends and if one person applies more force compared to the other, the table will not be straight but rather it rotates. Similarly, in this case, the end which has been pulled by B will move ahead compared to end A which means that the object is rotated by a small angle. So, we can conclude by saying that if an object is moving in one direction, let us say x direction and if a gradient with respect to the opposite direction is not equal to zero, then the rotation exists. Now, with the same context, let us take a fluid which is flowing in three dimensions. We all know that u is a component of velocity along the x direction, v is the component of velocity along y direction and w is the component of velocity along z direction. Now, for a fluid that is flowing in the x direction, for rotation to exist, which means the gradient of u along the y direction and the gradient of u along the z direction should not be equal to zero. Similarly, for a flow that happens in the y direction, the gradient of v along the x direction and the gradient of v along the z direction should not be equal to zero. And for a flow that happens in the z direction, the gradient of w with respect to x direction and the gradient of w with respect to y direction should not be equal to 0. Now, if all the six gradients is equal to 0, which means it refers to a irrotational flow. Now, even if 5 gradients out of the 6 is equal to 0, 
and only one gradient is not equal to zero that also refers to a rotational flow now to understand rotation let us take a fluid element in three dimensions now when we say rotation it does not happen only with respect to one axis the fluid element rotates with respect to all the three axes that is it can rotate with respect to x axis it can rotate with respect to y axis and also with respect to z axis now to understand further let us view the fluid element from the front so that we could view the xy plane now when we see the fluid element from the front we could see a square and let us name the corners a b c d now this square is having a width dx along the x direction and height dy along the y direction now let us assume that the velocity component along the x direction at a point a is u that is the fluid will flow through the line ab with a velocity u now parallel to ab we have our side dc if the fluid flows through the line dc with a velocity u then rotation does not exist this is because there is no gradient along the y axis because the difference in velocity between the two lines would be zero therefore let us assume that the velocity along the line dc is u plus increase in velocity due to the gradient along the y direction that is we can write it as u plus w by dy y into dy similarly the velocity of fluid along ad which is parallel to y axis is assumed to be as v so therefore along bc the velocity should have increased due to the gradient and it should be v plus dv by dou x into dx now after a very small interval of time let us say dt because of the difference between these two velocity components there will be a rotation on the side ab and the point b moves to a new position b dash now this means that ab rotates by a small angle and let us call this angle as d alpha now the length of bb dash after a small interval of time dt is equal to now we know that uh, the velocity is equal to distance traveled by time taken so the distance traveled will be equal to velocity into time so based on that we can say the length of bb dash is equal to the extra velocity acting on b into the time taken now if we look into the diagram we will know that the extra velocity acting on b is dou v by dou x into dx therefore the length bb dash is equal to dou v by dou x into dx into the interval of time dt now whenever an object rotates then we have to define something called as angular velocity now please note that we will go with the assumption that whenever an object rotates in the anti clockwise direction then we will consider that to be as positive and if it rotates in the clockwise direction we will consider that to be as negative now the angular velocity of the side ab we will call it as omega ab now since omega ab is in the clockwise direction sorry anti clockwise direction we can write omega ab is equal to d alpha divided by dt it's because it is in the anti clockwise direction and this equation is obtained by the definition of angular velocity now we know that the time taken for the rotation from ab to ab dash is very small and for this small time the angle would also be very very small so we also know that for very small angles we can write d alpha is equal to tan of d alpha now tan alpha is nothing but the opposite by hyper, uh, adjacent so which means we can write the opposite side which is bb dash divided by the adjacent side that is dx now we all know the value of bb dash which is nothing but dou v by dou x into dx into dt and divided by the whole thing divided by dx now cancel out canceling out the dx terms what we get is d alpha will be equal to dou v by dou x into dt so omega ab will be equal to dou v by dou x into dt the whole thing divided by dt and when we cancel out the dt terms 
we get omega a b will be equal to dou v by dou x. Similarly, at the same interval dt, because of the difference between these two velocities, the site a d rotates by a small angle d beta in the clockwise direction and the d reaches to a new point d dash. Similarly, the length of dd dash, same like the ab, we can write it is dou u by dou y into dy into dt. Now, repeating the same steps as in the side ab, just that here the angle of velocity is negative because of the clockwise direction, we get omega ad is equal to minus dou u by dou y. As you can see, the side ab and side ad is rotating in such a way that its axis is perpendicular to the screen. That is, its axis is parallel to the z-axis. Therefore, the angular velocity of the fluid element ABCD is about the z-axis, which we'll call it as omega z, where omega z is the average of the angular velocity of the sides AB and AD. Therefore, we can write omega z is equal to half of angular velocity of AB plus the angular velocity of AD. So we will substitute the values, we will write omega z is equal to half of dou v by dou x minus dou u by dou y. So this would be an equation for the angular velocity about the z axis. Similarly, for the angular velocity about the x axis, we will be calling it as omega x is equal to omega x is equal to half of dou w by dou y minus dou v by dou z. Similarly, for the y-axis, we can write it as omega y is equal to half of dou u by dou z minus dou w by dou x. Now, the average of all the three angular velocities, we'll be calling it as omega, okay? And that would be, we can write it in the vector form as omega is equal to omega x i plus omega y j plus omega z k. Now, this omega is called as rotation. Now, whenever we define rotation, it is important for us to define the term vorticity. Now, vorticity is defined as the measure of rotation of a fluid particle. So, mathematically, we can say that it is equal to the twice the angular velocity of the fluid particle and it is denoted by zeta. Now, where zeta is equal to 2 times omega. Now, because of rotation, we can see that the fluid element, which was supposed to be in square in shape, has changed or deformed its shape. This deformation is called as angular deformation. So, mathematically, we can define it as the average change in the angle contained by the two sides. So, we can see that the change in angle in the two sides, from the diagram, we can see it is d alpha and d beta. Therefore, angular deformation, we can define it as half of d alpha plus d beta. As you can see, this deformation has happened because of parallel velocities, which is nothing but shear. Now, so this deformation, as you can see, is nothing but strain, right? So therefore, we can say this angular deformation can also be called as shear strain. Now, since the deformation occurs with respect to time, we have to define something called as shear strain rate, which is defined as the rate at which the angular deformation occurs with respect to time. Therefore, we have to say mathematically, shear strain rate is equal to half of d alpha by dt plus d beta by dt, which is nothing but half of dou v by dou x plus dou u by dou y, which we have derived in the rotational uh, in the rotation derivation. So this comes to the end of the session. I hope all of you would have understood the concept of rotation, vorticity and angular deformation. If you like my video, please do subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. See you in another video. Thank you.